Choosing the best parts for your next gaming PC build is easily one of the most important things to get right in the entire PC building process. And it's for that reason that I always recommend people start out by picking the CPU and GPU combo. And that's why in today's video, I'm going to be running through the best CPU and GPU combos you can buy right now, talking about how I select the best pairings in the first place and the next steps to follow once you've gone ahead and picked the CPU and GPU for your next build. Let's do this. The NZXT H9 series is here, a range of performance dual chamber mid tower PC cases that are sleek, sturdy and place an emphasis on airflow. They feature side mounted angled intake, simple cable management and support for dual 420mm radiators. A spacious design leaves great hardware clearance and a panoramic front and side panel showcases your build in all of its glory. Learn more at the first links in the description below. I'm going to begin with some important context about why picking a CPU and GPU GPU first is the right decision and why this combo is so important. Now you want to allocate as much budget as possible in your build to the graphics card and the CPU. These are the two components that really define the kind of performance your build can achieve. Get these right, the whole system becomes a lot easier, get them wrong and you're wasting money before you've even started. The key here is that we want to spend as much money as possible on the graphics card without introducing a CPU bound bottleneck. Now, believe it or not, every build has a bottleneck. Every build has one thing that holds the performance back. Otherwise, your performance would basically be unlimited. We call it a constraining factor. Now, what we really want is for the GPU to be the bottleneck. That might sound kind of counterintuitive, but it means we'll get the most usage out of the GPU possible and get the biggest gaming performance gains. Now, for gaming, the kind of CPU you need depends on a lot of factors. Yes, the money you spend and the graphics card you pick, but actually the resolution you game at as well. Well, at 1080p, the GPU is having to work comparatively less hard, and as such, the processor tends to become a bigger bottleneck. At 1440p, the CPU is still important, but the GPU begins to take over, while at 4K, you'd be surprised by just how low end you can go on a CPU and not lose a great deal of performance. I mean, check out the RTX 5080, one of the most expensive GPUs on the market, side by side with a 9800X 3D and Ryzen 5 9600X. Yes, there's a performance drop off, but at 4 4K is nowhere near as drastic as you might imagine. Tune down to 1080p and you can see how the performance gulf tends to become a lot bigger as of course we're relying more on the CPU than the GPU. Now in the world of CPUs and GPUs you've basically got two brands to pick from for each with some exceptions. GPUs you've got Nvidia and AMD. Intel have recently joined the party on the budget end of the spectrum so they may be worth considering but Team Red and Team Green have the lion's share of the market. In the world of CPUs you have exactly two options to choose from. AMD once again, who tend to be by far and away the most popular right now for gamers and Intel, who are struggling a little bit, but we'll talk about that a little more later on. So then, what should you actually buy? Now, let me start off with our cheapest CPU and GPU combo, and I feel like this is where things could get a little controversial from the very beginning, and that's because I'm going to recommend the RTX 5060 with an AMD Ryzen 5 7600. The RTX 5060 and RX 9060 XT 8GB both come in at a $299 price point and are both in many respects a flawed product. That's because the 5060 and 9060 8 gig both have just that, 8 gigs of video memory. That's a lot less than we would like to see. For 1080p, it's not going to be a major problem, but in other resolutions, it starts to become a lot more limiting. Now, the alternative would be the similarly priced Intel Arc B580, but that's suffering from availability problems. And while it has 4 gigs more VRAM, it is quite a lot slower in rasterization than cards like NVIDIA's RTX 5060. Now, my advice would be at 1080p that this is your best option. It's not an option that I love, and it's not an option I particularly enjoy recommending, but it does provide good 1080p performance. And paired up with last gen's Ryzen 5 7600 can deliver quite a lot to the table. In our gaming benchmarks at 1080p high settings across the board, the RTX 5060 delivers a respectable 230 FPS on average in Apex Legends, 118 frames per second on average in Cyberpunk, and a 101 frames per second on average in Marvel's Rivals, all at rasterization. Now, there are certain games where the VRAM limitation on the 5060 and RX 9060 become very limiting, and that's where potentially the new RX 9060 XT comes in. Now, AMD are going to charge you a pretty modest price premium for the privilege of the 16 gigs of VRAM, and it's also a much faster card, generally speaking, than the 5060. And as such, paired up with the 7600 would be a really great combo if you're looking to get into 1440p gaming, where the extra VRAM 
is needed without breaking the bank. Now, the first combo is going to set you back in the region of around $500. This is going to take you more towards that $550 mark at MSRP pricing. And for that, you are getting a lot more for your money. I think it's important to acknowledge that not all of you will want to spend the extra $50. But if you take a look at our gaming benchmark numbers, you can see just how much extra performance you're going to get for your money. This translates into an additional 20 frames per second or so in Apex Legends, an additional 10 frames per second in Cyberpunk, and a staggering 46 FPS difference in Marvel's Rivals at that 1080p high rasterization preset. But what if you've got a bit more money to spend? We've gone through two combos for the five $600 mark that are going to be great for 1080p gaming. But what about 1440p? Well, for in the region of around about $700 or so, you're looking at this, the RX 9070 non-XT and AMD's Ryzen 5 9600 non-X. Now, this combo is going to be really fantastic for those of you that want the absolute best 1080p gaming performance that GPUs and CPUs have to offer, but also the leverage to game easily at 1440p. Now, the RX 9070 is a slightly unusual GPU from AMD. It's basically the cheaper version of the 9070 XT, which launched to rave reviews, and it's essentially the GPUs that didn't quite make the grade for AMD's more expensive XT derivative. Now, at the time of launch, the MSRP difference between these two cards was fairly modest, but in retail, we're starting to see this gap widen, and the 9070 is a card you shouldn't overlook when it comes to 1440p gaming. When paired up with the Ryzen 5 9600, that's the successor to the 7600 featured in my last two combos, it's a really powerful offering, especially at 1440p. So let's take a look at those numbers. In Marvel's Rivals at 1440p high settings, you're looking at an average of 120 frames per second. That's 30 FPS more than our last combo and provides a significant performance uplift. Move through into Hogwarts Legacy, which is a fairly VRAM intensive title, and this gap widens even further. With the RX 9070 and 9600 pulling in an average of 133 FPS at 1440p high settings, significantly more than the around 90 frames per second seen from the 9060 XT. While Cyberpunk gives us just shy of 140 FPS too. This then a really powerful combo, especially at those slightly higher resolutions where the CPU is less of a bottleneck. And at MSRP, you're looking around about seven to $750 for these two components. Now I should clarify the reason I'm using MSRPs today is because it's the only metric that I can use to space these cards out in a way that makes sense. I'm acutely aware that MSRP pricing for lots of you, especially in North America, is still a fantasy. And while things in the UK are actually, I'm glad to report, really quite good in terms of MSRP pricing, I appreciate that's not mirrored around the world. Now, if you've got a little bit more money to spend, what should you go for? And this is where we have a couple of options to talk about. With my next sub $1,000 CPU and GPU combo actually giving you a couple of different options. Because for a total of around $979, you can pick up the Ryzen 5 9600X and RTX 5070 Ti, or for around about $150 less, you could swap this out for the AMD 9070 XT. Both of these two GPUs are fairly evenly matched, and both are a great match for the AMD Ryzen 5 9600X. Now, the RX 9070 XT is at MSRP significantly cheaper, but where this gets really complicated is that very often in the real marketplace, this is going to come in at a price that's a lot closer to the 5070 Ti than what perhaps the launch MSRPs might have originally suggested. And while I appreciate right now it's kind of cool to hate on NVIDIA and be like, yeah, boo, NVIDIA, the 5070 Ti is an immensely capable GPU and gives you the benefit of features like ray tracing, which is better on NVIDIA than it is on AMD, DLSS 4, which is better than its FSR counterpart, and dare I say it, if you want to use it and you haven't got to use it, multi-frame generation. So let's talk about those features and if they matter, if they're important. Ray tracing is essentially the way light is dealt with in games. Turning ray tracing on can be very performance intensive, but can have a really dramatic improvement to things like shadows and lighting. I know lots of people who like to turn ray tracing on because they just want the best visuals and are not bothered necessarily about the frame rate sacrifice. AMD is catching up, they're just not quite there yet. DLSS and FSR are very similar in that they use machine learning to basically render the game out at a low resolution, say 1440p, and use AI to upscale up to 4K. What this can do is it give you the frame rate advantage of a lower resolution with less pixels to deal with, but with the visual that you'd come to expect from a more native experience at that high resolution. Now, NVIDIA's tech on that front is better, and for that reason, a lot of people prefer to go Team Green. And whether you agree or not, the latest Steam hardware survey results show that to be the case, with NVIDIA stomping ahead yet again in market share and AMD struggling to catch up. 
Now, with that being said, which one should you actually pick? Now, if you want rasterization and value for money, and you can find the 9070 XT for at least $70 less than the 5070 Ti, I would go for the AMD card. If you want to spend that little bit more money and you want the more well-rounded feature set, and potentially this card is price competitive in your region, go for the 5070 Ti. Now, in terms of performance, this is what the numbers look like. At 1440p to begin with, at 1440p high in Cyberpunk, we see the RTX 5070 Ti lead out by just one frame per second. Marvel's Rivals sees it fall around 6 FPS behind, but still delivers a respectable 133 frames per second on average. While Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 sees the 5070 Ti with the 9600X pull an 11 frame per second lead over the 9070 XT with the 9600X too. While tuning up to 4K does see the 5070 Ti in a pretty respectable position, whether that be in Apex Legends, Hogwarts Legacy where there's around a 6 FPS delta, and Marvel's Rivals, which is typically stronger on AMD anyway, still sees the 5070 Ti pull in over 80 frames per second on average. Now, the reason I wanted to split this combo up is not because I couldn't decide between AMD and Nvidia. If the 9070 XT was available for its $599 MSRP, I'd be metaphorically throwing the 5070 Ti out the window. But that's just not the case. And until AMD can get a control on pricing on their cards, it keeps Nvidia well and truly in the fight. Now then, what if you want to spend more money and you want the best performance the market can offer? Well, my final two combos are going to deliver that. The first for an MSRP of around $14 to $1,500 and the second for a little bit more money yet. Now, the RTX 5080 is the fastest mainstream GPU, in my opinion, on the market right now. New rumors suggest that AMD may have something to counter this card, but frankly, we haven't seen it yet. We don't know if it's going to actually exist. And when they do release it, if they do release it, we're not sure whether you'll be able to buy one. The 5080, again, in certain regions is available for in and around MSRP. And when paired up with the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D, currently the quickest gaming CPU on the market, this combo can really do it all. Looking at 4K, because that's probably what you're going to be gaming on with a combo like this. And we see over 100 frames per second in Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 Zombies at 4K rasterization. 96 frames per second from Cyberpunk 2077, and over 100 frames per second in Hogwarts Legacy, a game famed for being really difficult to run. Now, the 5080 is going to give you advantages like plenty of video memory. 16 gigs is maybe a little tight, but for 4K, it's currently adequate. It gives you a price reduction over the last generation RTX 4080. Again, at those MSRP price points, it's so difficult right now trying to really talk to that given the various pricing fluctuations on a region by region basis and the full NVIDIA suite, which is a really, really powerful set of tools and softwares that can really help level up your gaming experience. And I really mean that, by the way, that's not some like pro NVIDIA drivel. Now, if you want to spend even more money and you want the best performance on the market for around two and a half thousand dollars, you'll probably be looking at the this, the RTX 5090. Now again, I'd pair it up with the same CPU, the 9800X 3D, purely because it's the fastest gaming chip on the market right now. If you wanted a build that also is going to be great for video editing and rendering, Core Ultra 9 will get a bit more of a look in, but I'd also point you towards the new Ryzen 9 9900X 3D and 9950X 3D. They provide similar gaming performance to the 9800X 3D, but with the additional cores you're going to need for things like video editing, rendering, and streaming. Now, I don't even need to talk about the numbers that we've achieved here, because in every graph, the 5090 tops the charts, and by a significant margin, you get a staggering 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 video memory. Wow. And the best that gaming GPUs currently have to offer. I can't see AMD rivaling this thing anytime soon, and with pretty solid power efficiency, given the maximum amount of actual gaming horsepower it can offer, the 5090 is a monster. If you're building your first PC, this is not the card you want to buy. In fact, far from it. And if you're buying a combo like this, with respect, you're probably not watching one of my videos talking about the best combos. But I do think NVIDIA should be applauded for just how amazing this GPU is. Yes, it's very expensive, but with no competition at the top end of the market, you can hardly blame them. Now, I did say earlier that I would talk a little bit about the next step. So what should you do if you've picked out a CPU and GPU combo I've discussed? How do you move from here? Well, you can use the CPU to figure out compatible motherboards. The CPU will also determine what generation of memory you want. And for gaming, you want 32 gigabytes. If you're doing things like video editing or rendering, you'll want to perhaps step this up to 48 or 64. But for gaming, 32 is just fine. You can also use the CPU and GPU combo to figure out the power supply. Most graphics cards have recommended PSU wattage.
voltages, and you can use tools like PC Part Picker to find minimum system power requirements. Just remember to add at least a 30% margin on top to account for any upgradability, any efficiency loss through the power supply you've gone for, and of course, a bit of headroom to allow for transient power spikes. With all that decided, you can likely find a cooler that's suitable for the TDP and heat output of the CPU you've got. You can also find a case that fits all of your components, and before you know it, you've practically got yourself a gaming PC build. What do you guys think of these combos? Do you agree with all of them? Do you think I got some wrong? Genuinely, do let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching today's video, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.